Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come to the porch, come to the porch. Step on up, pull up a step, and have a seat with me on the porch. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Tam, your empowerment coach. Happy Sunday, happy Sunday. A beautiful Sunday afternoon here in the great state of Texas. And I am popping in to share just a few nuggets with you this Sunday afternoon. But come on in, come on in. Join me on the porch. And if you are not familiar with my face or this space, when I say, come on in, come up to the porch, the porch, this is the area, the space that I'm in. I am not physically on a porch, although sometimes I do actually record videos from the porch, like outside. But the porch is, it's symbolic of a safe space. So when, sister, my love, when I am inviting you in, to the porch. I am inviting you into a safe space, a space that I have created, um, a space where you can just be yourself, you can relax, let your hair down, pull on up and let's sit down and let's just have some girl time. Just love on one another, celebrate one another. That's what we do here in this space. This is also a space where you can just you can just take a deep breath. You can just, you can be yourself regardless of what's going on around you, regardless of what's going on inside of you. You are welcome in this space. This is a space of healing. This is a space of empowerment. This is a space of restoration. This is a space that I would love for you to join me. A space where, again, we can just love on each other. We can be ourselves. We can relax. Let our cares just kind of slip away, right? So come on in and join me. Come on in and join me. This is the porch. And if you are not familiar with why I call it the porch, the porch, that was one of the spaces, um, one of the places um, my grandmother's porch in particular, where as a kid growing up, I felt safe, is when I think about sitting on her porch, I think about good times with my cousins and family members, especially on Sundays after church, we would go down to my grandmother's house, she will have cooked and everybody eat. And Sunday afternoon, we sit in the front yard on the porch and just fellowship, family, fun, fat bellies, <laughs> and fellowship. Because if you hadn't known or heard it before, my grandmother was a good cook too. My mama's a good cook, and then it stopped. Yeah, I'm a. I'm, that's that's not me. But that's that's something else. But anyway, I just want you to be welcome to this space. Um, but join me on the porch. Again, a place of healing, empowerment, and restoration. So today I wanna to pop in and talk about a couple of different things, actually. Um, today we are talking about hmm, that D word. <laughs> and you're like, what? Discernment. <laughs> We're talking about discernment today. So I'm gonna just I'm going to try to and break it down to you for you as plain as possible to the best of my understanding. Okay. So when we talk about discernment, I'm not talking about the spiritual gift of discernment. I'm talking about a discernment that we all have access to. Discernment meaning it, it is a God-given ability to be able to look at a thing, a person, a situation, an opportunity, and make calculated decisions based upon observations, what you're seeing, based upon evaluations, how you are evaluating that situation. That is discernment. So let's put it down, let's put it a little simpler, right? Simpler terms. For example, if I say that I'm discerning a 
a relationship, okay? Not judging the person that I may be in that relationship with, but I am discerning the relationship itself, okay? So what I, what I would then do is I'm gonna take a step back and I'm gonna look at what's going on in this particular relationship with this person. Let's just say this is my best friend, okay? So this is a relationship, not just a friendship because it's a little bit more than that uh, because best friends are, are like, like family, like, you know, like that's my sister, right? So say for example, I'm, I'm using her relationship as an example to, um, to explain discernment. So in that relationship with my friend, my best friend, if all of a sudden things are going well, we're communicating really well, and then all of a sudden um, communication like declines, right? So I may be reaching out to her and be like, hey, how is it going? And then two and three days go by before she responds to a text, okay? So then over a period of time, I notice that that has happened like the, fast, the, the past five times I've communicated with her or have attempted to communicate with her, it's been this serious delay in response. Two and three days then become grow over those five times. Now we've gone from like two or three days. Now it's a week or more before you're even acknowledging that I have reached out to you. Now, this communication, I'm not asking for anything. Hey, I'm like, hey, sis, how's it going? How's everything in your world? Let's hook up. It's been a while since we've seen each other. Let's do brunch. Let's get together. Let's do something, right? So over a course of time, her response has taken even longer for her to get back to me. Okay, that's one. When there is a response, it is very abrupt or simple responses. One or two word responses. So I just sent you this whole communication. Hey, how's it going? Hope all is well. I know the last time that we talked, you said that you and the kids, you know, y'all were going out of town for the weekend. How was your trip? Is everything good? Like, I that's my communication to you. And then when you respond to me, you like, we good. <laughs> I'm like, what? What? That's it? Like, you good? And so then I'm going to come back. Like, I'm happy to see, like, oh, okay, you don't text me back, right? So then I'm going to text you back with some substance. Like, I'm trying to have this, I'm trying to get a dialogue going here, and it's not, it's not working. So after a while, because now I am judging the behavior, I still don't necessarily know like what all is going on with her. The behavior is telling me that it's something. I'm not judging her. I'm judging the actions, the behavior. Now I'm discerning that something is up. Now I'm discerning that something is up. And if I continue to make these attempts to try to communicate. So I've gone from texting now to calling, leaving messages, and there's still no response. Like I don't even get a call back. I might get a text back a couple of days later. Oh, I was busy. So now I'm discerning Oh, okay, something something is going on. Now, this is what I can do with this at this point, okay? Because this is a this is a relationship. This is two-way communication with this person. And 
this is my best friend. So this is someone that I have known for years. I'm talking 20 plus years. Okay. So now I'm going to be a little bit more discerning. There's only, I can't, I'm not just going to do a pop-up at your house because I don't know very honestly. It could be something going on, right? Um, but very honestly, I don't know how I would be received. If that's the, the feeling, the tone that I'm getting from, um, from communication, like text messages or, 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 or messages, if that's the communication that I'm getting, uh, just kind of cold, um, dry, then what would I get if I go to your home? I may be able to gather more information. Maybe I can see that you, you're in a situation and you, you really need help. But we've been ride or die for 20 plus years. I've seen you in some pretty tough times. So it could be something that's going on over there, but if, do you not value our relationship enough to reach out and be like, or even respond to me and say, hey, sis, A, B, and C is going on right now. I need some space. I need some time. I need to figure things out. Just I'm just asking for communication. I, because I do not have all the answers at this point, I am kind of seeking answers. I'm trying to get a little bit more, but it's not coming. It's not, not being given to me in return. And so now I'm going to be more discerning. So now either I can continue down this path. I can continue to exert the energy, exert the time, exert the worry well, what if, well, what if, well, could it be, you know, well, what, I, that, because all of that is taxing as well. My time, my energy, right? All of that. I can continue down that path, but how long, how long am I willing for it to be, to do that? How long am I going to continue to reach out to a person who I'm understanding, I'm discerning now that you don't want to be bothered. And I think that I'm thinking that we're better than that. Y'all, that within itself that's a whole nother topic, but that place you have an understand that mix, mix match understanding of what a relationship truly is can hurt some feelings. Oh, it can hurt some feelings. So I'm sitting here, I'm saying, Hey, we've known each other 20 plus years. I have been there for you in some situations. You have been there for me in some situations. We have both pulled each other through some very hard times. We have both seen each other at some of our worst times, physically seen, been in the presence of one another in some of our worst times, and you can't respond to me. I'm thinking like you like blood. I'm closer to you than some of my blood relatives. So that's how we are. In my mind, that's the type of relationship that we have. But if that other person, if it's not quite the same, that mix match, they to 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 them, I just be, oh yeah, that's one of my girlfriends. Oh, okay. Now I'm not saying I gotta have some high rank in your life. You know, God, husband, kid. I'm not saying I'm up there with all of that, but come on now. That can end up in some hurt feelings. Mm -hmm. 
So even when I say that discernment, you're making a uh, judgment, not judging the person, but you are judging the, uh, the actions or let me not use the word judge. Cause I don't, I don't want to, that to, to be confusing to you. Not, you're not judging the person, but you might, or you are making observations. You are evaluating. So right now in this season, this particular part of me evaluating the relationship with my, with my best friend who has not, or will not return or respond to me, who, um, Communication is pretty much null at this point. I can continue to try to chase after because at, 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 at some point, that's what it's going to begin to seem like, that I'm chasing after someone. I can continue to do that. Or... I can put some boundaries up. You know what? Clearly, this is a good place for a boundary. It seems as though one has already been set. Not by me, but it seems as though one has already been set. And if I'm continuing to try to push and push and push and push and push, now I'm being disrespectful. Now I am not honoring um, your wishes. Now, this is a perception. I have discerned this based up off of the behavior. I still love you. I still care about you, but I'm discerning now. I'm evaluating the situation. I have made observations of the situation. It has now come to a point to where I'm exercising and, and, and continue to try to pour and to reach out and to, to, to give. That's all coming this direction for me out. But nothing is coming in. No value is being added. No responses are being made. Not even a single, hey sis, how are you doing? Old dog, cat, how you, nothing, <laughs> nothing, none of that, none of that is happening. Then I have to make a decision. So now I am discerning that perhaps we are in a season where this relationship has changed, has evolved into something else. Now, is it that later on we might get back to, you know, she may reach out to me, you know, next month, three months, six months down the road and be like, hey, sis, I'm sorry, you know, but I'm not going to chase it. Do I care about this person? Absolutely. Ride or die, thicker than blood. We used to be in the streets together all the time. <laughs> right? But the seasons have changed. The seasons have changed. And so if we are not careful, if we are not more discerning of situations, uh, opportunities, relationships, within our within our lives we can find ourselves in some very trying times exhausting times if i continue to reach out to this person y'all what does that say when you continue to do the same thing over and over and over but you expect different outcomes what we call it <laughs> That's too much. That's too much. You are the person. I am the person who's losing because I'm constantly giving and trying to reach out and trying to be there, trying to keep this thing going. Now, this example is of a, um, of a, a friendship 
uh, a sisterhood um, with a really, really uh, close girlfriend, right? But this could be with any relationship. This could be with any relationship. This could be even with any with with an opportunity that may be presented to you. Just because something that comes to you, it seems good, it don't mean it is God. And if he says it's not for you, then it's not for you. I don't care how, how it glitters, how it sounds, what benefits you may have attached to it, what elevation that you can have with it. Just because it's good, it doesn't mean that it's God. If it's not for you, leave it alone. So when those opportunities come, okay, let's sit back. Let's do a little research. Let's make some observations. Well, well who, number one, who is this person who's coming to you with this opportunity? How, how, what do you know about them? What do you know about this business? What do you know about the brand? Do some research, do some homework. Let's make some observations. Let's evaluate some situations. Okay. Oh, they did work over here with this person. And this is what happened. Oh, well, they did work with them. And this is that. We have to be more discerning. We have to be more discerning in our lives. We're in a season right now that we do not have time. We do not have time nor the energy. Time is our greatest resource and we don't get extra. It's not like you can go buy some and it's added to your account. Oh, I'm getting low on days. <laughs> let me go over here. Let, let me go to the bank and get, get like a hundred, another 100 days added to my account. It doesn't work like that. So our time is very precious and we want to spend it wisely. So when we get to a season where we're exercising and we're able to discern more and we can't do it on our own. Remember, this is a God-given ability to be able to do this. So we're doing this with the aid of the Holy Spirit who can see all, who knows all, we don't. So if there's any areas of like, okay, I need you to help me right here. Show me what I need to see. This is a great opportunity. This is a fantastic opportunity. But is this the opportunity for me? Yes, that has been, I have, I have called that person my ride or die for the past 20 years. But what conversations have I not heard? Because recently some things have changed in my life. I have experienced some elevation in my life. Is that the problem? You would be surprised. And I even had someone to tell me like, look, as you start elevating, people gonna be acting funny. <laughs> and I was like, no. I don't think so. I, no. I'm not saying that that's the situation with my friend, like in that example. I'm not saying that's the situation, but that's can be that's a possibility. But that's what I'm also saying is that we're not able to do this on our own. When we are discerning, Lord, I need you to help me with this one. Because it could very well be, again, that there's other conversations that I have not heard. But he knows all. And so because he knows all, he blocking it. Oh, it's, it's time for that to cut off. We finna stop this right now. Because that's my daughter. I'm taking her. This, If you tripping about where she is right now, and I know I'm going to take her here, oh, we're going to cut this off. Blocked. And here I am trying to be like, hey, sis, what's going on? I'm steady knocking on your door, and you're not answering. I'm steady knocking on your door. And he already done shut that door. And be like, girl, come on here. Leave that alone. 
that is not for you. That is not for you. So discernment. It is now part of my daily prayer. It is now part of my daily prayer. Lord, increase my discernment. And give me the ability, the knowledge, the wisdom that I need to act accordingly. If I see that it's not for me, then give me the wisdom to leave it alone. I'm discerning. I'm looking at the fruit on the tree and it's toxic. Your behaviors, your actions, what you were doing is toxic. Because the more I see what you're doing, you're blocking me. You're not responding to me. But here I am steady trying to respond to you. I'm steady reaching out to you. But you're not doing that to me. We have to be more discerning. We have to be more discerning when he block it, when he shut the door, the door shut, leave it alone. Don't be old to be like knocking on the door, pulling on the knob, Mm -mm. leave it alone. Leave it alone. And for some of us, that is very hard to do. That is very. But in this season, I'm like, Lord, help me to be more discerning and give me the wisdom to act accordingly. When I have, be like, oh, okay, you showing me, you showing me something. Okay, I got you. I got your number. (laughs) Okay, trust and believe it, leave it alone. So we have relationships, opportunities, We have to be more discerning in this season. So we do not waste time in this season. There's too much work for us to do. While you standing up here, you spend all of this time knocking on this door, trying to get this person to respond to you, trying to get this opportunity. And let me tell you something. I did that for years. Not only just when relationship, toxic relationships, Being down the doors thinking that that was an opportunity for me. And he had already shut the door. Literally years, steady going back. Steady going back. Oh, well, I'm going to apply again. You trying to set up meetings with all these different people. You trying to show up, you know, show yourself. And hey, I'm, this is, this is what I do. This is who I am. You trying to force, almost like force yourself on someone or into a situation. I saw a post the other day that says, says you trying to sit down at tables that you were meant to flip. That was me. That was me trying to sit down at a table. It's like this much room. You got the people uh, sitting here in chairs. You got this much room. And here I am coming in trying to squeeze in and have a seat. And baby, all I was all I was made to do was to walk in the room and flip that table. Pick that table up, move it off, and set down my own. Now I am the table. I am no longer trying to fit myself into situations where clearly I don't belong. I'm not supposed to be there. And have, had I not practiced discernment, I would still be, I would still be her trying to squeeze myself into that seat. And y'all, the seat was in the back of the room. And you said trying to get in there. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. We're not doing it anymore. So discernment. Practicing discernment in every areas of our lives. It saves us time. It saves us energy. It saves us resources. I cannot tell you 
the people that I met with, hey, will you practice this with me? Hey, can will you look at this for me? Hey, what do you what do you think about this? Or or spending money on more trainings, spending money on more uh, more certifications because you think that that's what's going to get you the job, and you steady pouring out. That's resources. That's time spent doing all of those things. That's energy doing all of those things. We have to be more discerning. We have to evaluate. We have to make observations so we know how to act accordingly. I'm not going to continue to walk up to a blocked, a, a, a locked door and pull on the handle and think the door is going to open. It is locked. Clip dead bolts. Leave it alone. Walk away. Discernment. We have to do better. We have to be more aware. And literally, that's what it comes down to. It is a level of awareness. You have to open up your eyes. You have to pay attention. You have to be very intentional. Pay attention. I called you on Monday. There was no response. I called you on Tuesday. There was no response. I called you. All of these things that you were, you're doing, I sent you a text message. I called you. Next day, I called you and I left a voicemail. I called your job. I drove by your house. Just examples. And once we have discerned, because we're praying for an increase in discernment, but we're also praying for the knowledge to know how to act accordingly, that's going to bring about a change. I did a video a couple of days ago, embrace the change. Change is inevitable. It doesn't necessarily mean that, that it's a bad thing. What's bad if I continue to run up to that door, banging on that door, trying to get somebody to let me in, banging on the door, trying to get that opportunity instead of walking away and creating my own opportunities. I will never forget. I was in a room last fall. So at the time, so this was around uh, October of 2023. I was in a Zoom, I was in a Zoom space, Zoom room, um, in a, in a meeting. And actually it was a class that I was taking at the time. And we had broken up into small groups, into the, the little breakout rooms. And I was in a room with this young lady. Um, she was, she was an older lady, but she was saying to, uh, I was sharing a, a win, right? And I'm giving a little background about the win. And I made the comment that I haven't received the opportunity yet. And I will never forget what she said to me. She said, baby, you got to create your own opportunities. Whoa. But if I am not, that was very mind blowing to me. And I have never forgotten that. That was like, so at this point, it's like six, seven, eight months ago when, when she said that, like six, six, seven months ago when she said that, but I have never forgotten that. I will never forget that. You got to create your own opportunities. Sometimes we got to create our own opportunities. But if I'm not more discerning, if I'm not making the observations, if I'm not evaluating, if I'm not being intentional, if I'm not being intentional, then I'm going to find myself still sitting up here beating on the door, trying to get my friend to talk to me, still sitting up here beating on the door, trying to get these people at this job to see that I am the right person for this promotion, that I'm qualified, that I am capable and I'm steady doing all of these, all of these things. It's not to say it's not good to showcase yourself. 
But time and time and time and time again, if you on the third or fourth time, that may just not be that opportunity for you, but you have to be more discerning. You have to be more discerning. If we don't have that ability, we will lose time. We will lose resources. We will lose energy. We have to be more discerning. We have to be more intentional, paying attention to what's going on around us. Opportunities. Relationships. We have to pay attention. The ability to be able to discern is the revelation of how to call a thing a call a thing to call a thing a thing. If it's over, it's over. Embrace the change and move forward. If that opportunity is not there for you, how can you create an opportunity for yourself? You're waiting for someone to come to you, to, 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 to see you. You're over here, look at me, look at me, look at me. Go create your own opportunity. Sometimes we just have, we have to do that. that and there, that is exactly what I have done. That is exactly the space that I'm telling y'all. When that lady said that to me, about six, six or seven months ago, I'm just like, wow. That is what I am doing right now, creating my own opportunities. I am going out. Still showcasing myself, but I'm not sitting around waiting for somebody to bring the opportunity to me. Does that make sense? Because I've gotten to a place to where like, oh, okay, because I've made observations and I have evaluated situations, okay, that's not, it's not there. It's not coming from that direction. Here you are, you have your back turned, you're focused on something that's over here and you got a million and one opportunities for you right back here. But we wouldn't know it unless we were more discerning. I had something else I want to talk about, but y'all, I have <laughs> spent way more time actually than I wanted to, but I hope that this blesses someone today. That we have to be more discerning in our personal lives, in our professional lives, in order for us to elevate in our lives, we have to be more discerning. We have, to, we have to be intentional. We have to pay attention. Be more discerning. Be more discerning. Hey, look, I have created, I have, for my professionals, for my professional sisters, right? You are in this season where, yes, you want to elevate. You want to move up in your career. And you may have already tried and gone for that promotion maybe one or two times before, right? But for whatever reason, you have not been able to land that big position. In this season, we're going to be more discerning. So I have created a free guide, a free resource entitled Seven Reasons Why You Did Not Get That Promotion and what you can do about it right now. Seven reasons you did not get that promotion. And so not only will I identify those reasons for you, I will give you, I have given you um, practical steps of what you can do right now to better position yourself. And we are exercising discernment. We are, we are opening up our eyes. We are opening up our ears. We are being more intentional. So you have possible reasons over here. And then we have strategic, very practical steps that you can do. If it's this, if it's you haven't, you haven't showcased your work enough, okay, these are the actions that you're going to take. 
to start showcasing yourself more. If you have not, if you've kind of been like that wildflower, you fierce, you bomb, you know how to do it, but you don't speak up, here are a couple practical steps that you can do to start speaking up a little bit more. Exercising your voice. Let them know that you exist. Let them know that you have value to add. We are creating our own opportunities. In the process of doing that, we are you exercising discernment. You have to know what's the old what's the old saying? Um, uh, the the old Kenny Rogers song, "Know when to hold them or fold them" or something like that. You got to know when to let it go. If it's not there, it's not there. If it's not there, it's not there. If it is not there, it is not there. And that is not on you. That is not a reflection of you. Because you are fierce. You are phenomenal. An amazing, an amazing woman with great value to add to any space that you are in. But sis, I need you to be more discerning. We have to learn how to be more discerning. Okay. All right. I love you right now in the bio, excuse me, in the uh, description, I'm going to drop the link, click on that link, go to my website. I want you to download the, um, the free resource, seven reasons why you did not get the promotion. And even though that is talking about a promotion, like a job promotion, I also want you to think about it. Talk like a promotion in your life. We are elevating our lives. We are elevating our lives. So even though it's it's when you see promotion and you're thinking about you're thinking about a job, I want you to go ahead and click on it anyway. Because there are practical steps. There are practical steps that you can use that can help you in other areas of your life, even in your personal space. Okay? You on that cut that 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 church committee? And, and they always asking other people, oh, well, sister so-and-so, you want to come up here? Can you, can you speak to the, speak to the group about this? Or, or can you, you know, we're going to showcase you. We're going to, you, are you, can you, is everybody else except you? And you sitting there, well, they don't ever, they don't ever call, um, they don't ever call, call on, call on me, you know, and oh, but you can pray. <laughs> you know how to get one through to him. You have that relationship with him. You have talent, you have abilities, and no one knows it because you're not speaking up. You're not speaking up. We are all valuable in the eyes of God. We all have something that we can give. Are you giving all that you can give? Okay, so even though it's promotion, I also want you to think about promoting in all areas of your life, not only professional, but also in your personal lives uh, as well. Click on the link in, in, my, in the description to go ahead and grab that free resource. All right, I know that it is going to bless you. I know that it is going to bless you. All right. All right, I'm getting out of here. Again, it's Sunday. It's a beautiful afternoon. So I'm about to step out, enjoy some of the sunshine. But sis, I love you. Thank you for joining me today on the porch. This is what we do on the porch. This is what we do, right? We, we heal together. We are empowering one another and we are restoring our lives. We are elevating our lives and being all that we have been created to be. Okay, I love you. Have a great day and I will check in with you soon.